When the Michigan Senate sent a red flag bill to the desk of Governor Gretchen Whitmer, it became the latest example of the increasingly blue swing state morphing into what the bill's author likes to call the anti-Florida. The legislation authored by Democratic State Senator Mallory McMurrow, who will join me in just a moment, uh, is part of a raft of comprehensive firearm restrictions signed into law in response to the February 13th mass shooting on Michigan State University's campus. It allows law enforcement agencies to seize guns owned by those considered a threat to themselves or others. And more broadly, the measure is just one of a handful of progressive policies ushered into law by Democrats since winning the legislature last November. Uh, they repealed the state's 1931 abortion ban. They added LGBTQ rights in the state's anti-discrimination protections. They passed a working families tax credit, and they even became the first state in decades to repeal the union restricting right to work law. In short order, Democrats have refashioned a state that Donald Trump won in 2016 into a laboratory of progressive economic and social policies. Could that work for the rest of the country? Joining me now is Michigan Democratic State Senator Mallory McMurrow. Uh, thank you so much, State Senator, for coming back on the show. It is great to see you again. First, let's talk about how you think Michigan Democrats got to this point. I mean, I think, as I just said, a few short years ago, Republicans had total control of state government, and Donald Trump won in 2016. Look, I want to be clear. This was a change 40 years in the making. The legislature has been under Republican control my entire lifetime. And Michigan was one of the most badly gerrymandered states in the country. But in 2018, voters passed a constitutional amendment to create an independent citizens redistricting commission. Then we had the Dobbs decision. We had Prop 3, which codified abortion access in our state constitution that helped drive votes. And we had incredible candidates who were running and running running hard because Michigan is not the far right state that gerrymandering would have had you believe. Let's talk about um, reproductive rights here for a moment, which was a centerpiece of uh, Michigan Democrats campaign messaging in 2022. Um, what is your reaction to the Supreme Court decision? And would you like to see your state do even more to protect reproductive care? We can and we will do more. And that is abundantly clear. Voters said overwhelmingly in the state of Michigan that abortion and reproductive rights are a constitutional right here in the state of Michigan. And that means accessing safe medical care. I think the Supreme Court decision gives us all a sigh of relief. But if we know anything, especially from the past year, it's that our, our work is not done. So we need to continue to push on the state level to make sure that here in Michigan, our fundamental rights and our freedom are are protected no matter what the Supreme Court does. I want to ask you about this term, Michigan becoming the anti-Florida. Talk to me about the broader idea um, behind how and why you coined that. So, look, states are the laboratories of democracy. We see everything is tested out in the states before it makes its way up to the federal level. And again, with Dobbs, Dobbs put states on the front lines. It has indicated how important these actually are. And if you look at Michigan versus Florida right now, Ron DeSantis is gearing up to maybe run for president against that other guy from Florida. And right now, he's trying everything. They're banning books. They're banning saying gay. They're banning uh, abortion. They're banning just fundamental safety. But meanwhile, passing permitless carry in the middle of the night. So you're going to have more guns on the street, regardless of whether or not you have a license for it. Ma meanwhile, here in the Midwest, we're protecting people. We're sending a clear signal to Democrats that we can fight back and we can win. And that no matter who you are and who you love, you're going to be welcome in Michigan. You will be protected and we're going to make sure you have great opportunities. Let me ask you about your recent decision that you would not seek the Senate seat being vacated by Michigan Senator Debbie Stabenow. Talk to us about that decision. Um, you, you clearly gained national recognition over the last couple of years, and, and many felt this might be an opportune time for you to take what you've done in Michigan to the U.S. Senate. We got to stop looking at Washington as the only thing that matters. I think that something that has been really irritating to me is this idea that somehow state legislatures are the bench. And that always implies that higher office means that it's somehow a promotion. And that gets us back into this mess that we started in, where we ignore what's happening in the states and state legislatures. And then they chip away and chip away and chip away. And before we know it, we've lost two thirds of controls of state legislatures like we did starting in 2009. 
I'm in exactly the place I need to be right now with a Democratic trifecta for the first time in my lifetime. You know, I ran to improve the lives of the people of the state of Michigan, and there's nowhere I can do that better than right here in the state legislature. What is uh, what is it that you're working on next? I mean, Michigan Democrats have racked up a series of impressive wins. What do you need to keep doing? We need to keep proving that social issues are economic issues. So I am now working with many of my colleagues on reforming our approach to economic development to make sure that we send the signal to the rest of the country that the talent, the people are going to be welcome here. And we are going to do what we need to do to expand into clean energy, to continue pivoting our mobility industry, our automotive industry to compete, and to make sure that people are clamoring to be here for all of those reasons and more. Uh, Michigan State Senator Mallory McMurrow, always a pleasure. Thank you for coming back on the show. Thanks, Amy.